On a headland halfway between Bay Roberts and Harbor Grace and Conception Bay is the small community of Brines Cove. On this perfect afternoon in early June, people in Brines Cove are taking advantage of the beautiful weather to catch up on their late spring chores. On the hill above the cove, a group of fishermen mend their capelin trap. The word's around that the local plants are in the market for capelin and won't buy any codfish. So most crews have left their cod traps in storage and are gearing up for the capelin fishery. Most crews, but not all. There's at least one crew in Brian's Cove getting ready for the cod trap fishery. But the fishing grounds where they'll set their trap are a long way from here. Max James fishes on the Labrador. His trap berth is down north in a quiet cove called Five Islands on the South Labrador coast. He and his son Wayne have been waiting for this day all winter. It's their own special brand of spring fever. The time comes, you know, to go to the Labrador. Uh, uh, you get that feeling that you just got to go. And that's it, you know. With, uh, if you had to look at the bad summers you've had, you have down there, and, and uh, you know, you wouldn't go at all. But, but the time comes around to go. I don't know, just, you get that feeling inside you, you just got to go. It's not. Uh, because you make the hell of a lot of money down there, but I suppose, then more especially the way it's going now, you know, the, 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 there's not too many jobs on the go, so I mean, you got to go fishing. And the only places I like to go fishing is, is the Larbador. I always like the Larbador. I've been going down there now probably around 20, 25 years, I suppose, I've been down there. And, and, uh, I just like to go there, that's all, and, and, and it's, I feel there's a better, there's a better, you know, there's a better fishing down there than this home because, like, when you go to Larbador, well, that's all you got to do is fish. When you're home here, you got fishing, you got to be doing this and doing something else around your home or something like that. So when you go to Labrador, you, I mean, it's, it's just one thing, fishing, and that's it. I've been fishing home a few a couple of summers, two or three summers, but uh, if I had to go make a living home fishing, I, I don't think I'd, I'd go at it. You know, I, I don't think I'd be, I'd be fishing home. But uh, Labrador is just something you look forward to every spring. Something draws you there. I don't know what it is. I mean, you don't you don't make no fortune of money there. That's for sure. You have your good years and bad years, but one with the other, I suppose. And you get along at it anyway. What's in all these barrels you got here? Well, this is wood now we got here for the summer. Down there where we're at now, there's not uh, there's not too much wood down there, you know. Some old slabs and old wood. We got 18 or 20 drumfuls, and uh, some more besides that. There's uh, there's not too much wood down there where we go at. Only you got to go a long distance up in the bay, and you know, spoil a day to go up and get probably one load of wood, right? So we take our firewood down. So how many barrels of this stuff we got? The slabs and stuff. Isn't it? Oh, it's about we got about 20 drums full up, I guess. Yeah. About 20 drumfuls. 20 drums. Now is that going to last your whole summer? Well, it'll go pretty. Pretty hard on it, you know. We might be probably a couple of weeks. We'd have to go probably up in the bay, probably get a bit of wood, you know. But uh, we got enough just about for all summer. This is probably the worst part of it, is it getting ready? Well, this is the hardest of it all, getting packing up and getting everything ready to bring down. Once you get down, you get straight in the way, it's not too bad. But I suppose this is about the hardest of it all, you know, trying to get, trying to get everything ready. Max and Wayne aren't the only Jameses going to Labrador. It's a family expedition. Max's daughter, Tina, will be making the trip. So will Wayne's son, Corey. They may be a bit reluctant at first to leave home and friends behind, but in a week or so, they'll be scrabbling around the rocks and stages of Five Islands, free as birds. The job of packing the Labrador boxes goes to Sylvia, Max's wife. 
You'd think it'd be a major headache organizing three months' worth of food, clothing, and other supplies. But after 25 years, Sylvia could do it in her sleep. She makes sure they have everything, including a little music for a Saturday night party on the Labrador. Finally, with as much jammed on the truck as they can find room for, Max and Wayne set off on the first of several trips to Bay Roberts. At Bay Roberts, the Topsail Star is loading freight and fishing boats for the Labrador. Years gone by, there'd be a lineup here with dozens of crews and tons of freight waiting their turn. It could take hours, even days, before they got to you. But nowadays, Max can just drive out in the wharf and load his freight right away. There's, there's a lot of difference in, in the crowd that used to be going down, say, 20 years ago, and what's going down now. I don't think there's not, not handy so many going now as there used to be that time. Of course, what happened there, you know, there was a few years down here on the Labrador that did, uh, the people was more or less starved out of it because there was no fish. I know we were down the last few years before we had a break. We stayed, I stayed home probably a couple of years. And I know the last couple of years that we were there, we never got, we never got fish enough, say, for the winter, you know, just for your own self. We probably two or three kittens of fish, something like that. Down in the hold of the Topsail Star, Captain Lloyd Bugden keeps track of the freight as it comes aboard. He personally supervises the loading of the fishermen's boats, knowing how important it is that they be positioned carefully and secured well. Captain Captain Bugden, the top of the is uh, uh, he, you, we've got no worry because he's a man that looks after everything. He looks after freight and, and looks after your boats more especially. So we got no more worry until we get down there. Same way coming back in the fall of the year. Now, years ago, we used to be going down there, our freight would be going down with the passengers, and we'd be, there's days, times we'd be down there for days waiting for freight. You know? But now, right now, everything seems to be on schedule, and, and uh, I mean, like I said before, when you, when you, when you get your freight on the top of the star, you can really depend on it, being there when you get there. The Topsail Star will spend another day or so loading freight and boats in Bay Roberts. Then she'll move on to other ports, where more fishermen and freight are waiting. In little more than a week, she'll be on the Labrador coast, dropping off her cargo at the various summer fishing stations like Five Islands. I'm good, Lord. All right, come down now. A week later, at the government wharf in Carbonear, the Bonavista is in. She's taking on some more freight, but this is primarily a passenger run. The fisherman's trip, they call it, carrying fishermen and their families to the Labrador. It's well into the night by the time the passengers start boarding. Most people spend the evening locking up the house, saying goodbye to family and friends, maybe having a couple at the club. They finally climb aboard just before the posted sailing time of 2,400 hours, midnight. Sylvia and Max have put it off to the last minute too. They know that even if the weather stays good and the ice isn't too bad, it'll still be three or four days aboard the boat before they reach Five Islands. So they're in no hurry. Yet when they're on board, it's a special moment for Max. Hello, buddy. You know? Seeing familiar faces, knowing he's one step closer to Labrador. 
By next morning, the Bonavista is well on her way across Trinity Bay. The passenger service has improved a lot since Max first went to the Labrador. But then again, the cost has gone up too. 25 years ago, you could go on the Labrador probably, you know, you could get down on the Labrador probably for a couple of hundred dollars. But today, you've got to cause a lot, cause a lot of money to get back and forth, more especially with the, with the, with the boat, because the, the yeah, food is the main thing. Anybody would say uh, three or four in a crew, it's going to cost you at least $150 a day just for, just for grub alone, just for your, your food. We're talking on, say, 20 years ago. Uh, you could go in and sit down for a meal, and it was 50 cents. Now, a meal today is probably, if you want a half-decent meal, is, well, you've got to pay $8 at least. And uh, your ticket was $6 at that time. And right now, it's, uh, I think our ticket now is $42 just for one person. Despite the higher costs, Max is the first to admit he enjoys the camaraderie and anticipation of the trip down north. Well, everybody seems to be pretty happy about it, you know. Everybody seems to be uh, delighted to get back again. Sometimes we have get together and probably play a bit of music or a game of cards or something like that, you know. So time goes pretty good on the way down, you know. It's, it's not too bad. You're just up in the head to a good summer, I guess, and hoping for a good summer. Uh, it is. Uh, it is good to be. It's good to be going back. That's one thing for sure, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're used to going to the Labrador. So, you, you, you know, you're really looking forward to it. And, and I guess that's, that's, that's what's in your mind. Uh, like everybody else is fishing, I suppose. You're just hoping for the fish to come. And then after waiting all the winter and, and, and uh, getting aboard the Bonavista and sailing out through the bay, it is a good feeling to get, to get back again. These are the summer fishing grounds of many Newfoundland families, the stark, rocky shores of southern Labrador. Scattered among the islands and inlets are tiny settlements, fishing stations that come to life for just three months each summer. Five Islands is one of those summer stations. It's part of a group of settlements collectively known as Sandy Islands, just south of Black Tickle. The Jameses share five islands with four other families from Conception Bay. Max ended up here purely by chance. Well, a long while ago now, we, uh, me and another fella, we, we uh, kind of got together and said we were going to the Labrador and we didn't know where we were going. We, we went down as, as partners and uh, we, got, we got in with a fella from, from Upper Island Cove, the fella Clark. So he told us about the place, and of course, this is where we ended up at, down here. So that's the only reason why, I suppose, at that time, we could have ended up anywhere, but just we got in tact with this man, Clark, old man Clark, and, and uh, we sort of ended up in Five Islands. A summer morning on the Labrador. It's the memory of such mornings that keeps Max going all winter. He lives for days like this, for a feeling he finds hard to describe. There's the place, I guess. There's the, the air, the clean air, I suppose. And um, you, just, I just, you just really like the place. You just really like the place. It's, it's a place that... Uh, I know you get up in the morning and you go fishing and, and, and you really enjoy getting out to go fishing. You're at it day and night, you don't... Uh, home, you're always aches and pains and on the Labrador, you don't have any around you. This is only Max's third year using cod traps. Before that, it was all gill nets and jiggers. But the switch to traps has paid off especially this year. It's nearly the second week in August, yet the codfish are still in the traps. 
While the longliners on the outside grounds have been having a terrible time, trap crews like Max and Wayne have been cleaning up. Well, this has been a really good year for us anyway. It's only two of us, we got about, I suppose we got about 300 on our salt now. And uh, we got another month yet, so it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a really good year. One of the best we've had, I think. It's kind of late in the year though for, for traffic, isn't it? Yes, usually we don't get no fish here after the 25th of July, but this year now, it's up to, I think today is the 6th or the 7th. So you can see, we're, you know, we're doing, still doing pretty good. Got about 2,500 pounds here this morning. And there's no sign of it going out. The caping is still around. And I suppose while the caping is around, the fish is going to be around, you know. Imagine. So this time of year, would you normally have your your, uh, your nets out of the water? Would you your traps out of the water? Oh, yeah. Yeah, usually around last of July, we take the traps up and then go for the gillnets, right, for the fall fishing, you know. Now, this year, like, we, we haven't used that many gillnets this year. So we're still using the trap. But how long is going to last? Well, that's something else I don't know. Looks pretty good here today. I mean, it's yes, it's uh, pretty good here. It's uh, like I said, we've got most catch here this morning, and it seems seems to be that all the traps around seems to be getting a fair amount of fish, you know. So there's no sign of the fish going out of the bays yet. The caping is still around, and while the caping is around, there's still going to be fish here. I guess the longer it stays, the better. I you know, I would imagine. This talking to most fishermen around. This is about the. Is this really unusual fish still being in this lake? Well, I haven't, I haven't seen it as late as this any year since I've been coming down here. I never ever see it in the fishing so late as this. You sure the bigger boats aren't getting much fish outside, are they? No, there's nothing. There's nothing outside, and it's nothing outside. It's only slob and dirt in the nits. There's no fish whatsoever. Fish, whatever fish there is, is in the rain, close by the rocks. All the, I've been like that all the summer. You know. This is only your third year with a trap, is it? This is the third year with a trap, yeah. You always use gillnets. But this year, we, last three years, we've had traps. And uh, seems to be doing very good with them, you know. One year with the other, this has been an exceptional year. This has been a really good year for us. What made you decide to switch over from, uh, switch over to a trap? Well, uh, like some years, you get fish in the trap, and uh, more years, there's the nets, so you've, got, you've always got to have one thing, you know, I mean, you have to have nits or a trap. You, you, you usually, you, if you fail with the trap, then you can get them with nits. Back at the stage, the work really starts. Nearly 3,000 pounds of fish to be unloaded, gutted, split, and put into salt. Once the day's catch is landed at the stage, the James's trap crew goes from two to three. Sylvia comes down from the house to pitch in. Well, more or less, she does more work than we does because, the, you know, there's, there's a good bit of work to keep everything going around the house. And then when we come in, then she's in the stage till all the fish is cleared away. She, she does the, she cuts throats and probably sometimes she's salting fish and, and uh, you know, when you're cooking and baking probably for, you know, probably five or six in crow. So, I mean, she got to pull of her hands all the time. Max needs all the help he can get. There's 300 kettles already in salt. When the collector boat comes in September, that will have doubled. Years gone by, uh, uh, 100 kentles a man would be a, a, a saving voyage. If you had three in crew, well, it would be 300 kentles, four would be 400 kentles, right? So uh, 
Although now there's people down here who got a lot more than that. There's people who got a lot less. So uh, I'd say if you had, um, you've got to save and voyage with, with 100 kennels a man. The Labrador is, is really coming back the last few years. You know, it's, it's been a way better than it was, say, years ago. At least you're getting half decent price now for your fish. Because years ago now, when I started going down there, you got uh, probably 5 50 or $6 for a kennel of fish. Well, right now you're getting you're getting around fifty dollars, so that's that's a lot of difference. Really. It's been a good summer for everyone in Five Islands. The four other crews here all come from the same area of Conception Bay as the Jameses. Everyone knows everyone else, and there's a warm sense of community in this small piece of Conception Bay transplanted to the Labrador coast. There's one crew there from Spaniards Bay, and there's three from Upper Iron Cove, and one from Burns Cove. And, uh, they've been there, one of the crews have been there uh, even longer than I've been there, this, this Clark family. Now, uh, the old man, he's given up now, and, and his son, his uh, grandson, he got it taken over. So, uh, you know, the, 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 most of the crowds from Round Up Royal Cove, most of the people are there. Oh, we get along, we get along great together. We get, uh, I must say, that, that there's, there's, really, there's really a good bunch of people there. Uh, I know uh, whatever is to be done, if you've got anything to do, or if you're down somehow there's always somebody there to help you that's the way it's been since i've been there and uh, i wouldn't ask to be in, intact with a better crowd than what, it, what is there that sense of community spills over into saturday nights when everyone drops the splitting knives and salt shovels and picks up accordions and guitars well we usually get together probably on a weekend you know every weekend and uh, probably have a little scoff and then Probably a few drinks, something, make up something to drink, because it's not a very good place for liquor. So uh, we usually make up something, and we have a pretty good time on a weekend. Probably a few hands to get together and have a dance or something. Uh, uh, that happens at least once a week. So after a hard, hard week at fishing, and probably a Saturday night you get together, probably in haul on you. Long rubbers cut off and probably get up the floor and have a few dances or something. It's it really enjoyed. These are the times Max cherishes the memories that will keep him going all winter, and next spring, rekindle his urge to return. I love Labrador. I look forward to going back again next year, and in the years to come, I hope. So, uh, and the family likes to be down there. So, as far as I'm concerned, there's no other place for me for fishing but Labrador. There's a love for it, I suppose. That's it, you know. That's the only way you can explain it. That's the only way you can explain the Labrador.